Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs through 8 Minute Empire Legends, which is the sequel to 8 Minute Empire, which was a popular little area control game that, in theory, takes place over 8 minutes, although Jen and I haven't found that quite to be the case. I imagine if we played really hard and really fast, and we're very, very quick and decisive, we might get it done in 8 minutes. But, regardless, uh, even though for our experience this is probably about a 20 minute game, it's a great 20 minutes. Jen and I enjoy this quite a bit, which is a surprise because this is kind of a little bit of a direct conflict kind of game, which I'm going to try and show you today. Let's jump right into it. Now, I've already got the board set up. There are these four regions tiles, and each one is two-sided. So every time you're going to get a different randomly generated collection of islands that we have traveled from our own native lands to come here and conquer. And what that means is, as part of setup, we put the tiles out. In the center tile, we put a... <clears throat> Uh, you know, this little guy, which means this is the starting city. We've come here, and this is the place where we can bring more armies into the world and expand out. And, you know, so this is where we first landed and built our first settlement. Although, interestingly, as part of setup, you know, on a different tile, we are supposed to randomly put two of our other cubes. I guess they're kind of lost legion that got, you know, um, you know there was a shipwreck or something. They ended up way over there, randomly. In a two-player game, and only a two-player game, there are also some locals, all these little gray cubes, which is you know, one of the player colors, and we're just supposed to scatter them all around, and so they are still vying for control of their own lands, and we might try to be kicking them out. And uh, officially, I believe, we're supposed to, I place one, Jen places one, I place one, Jen places one, you know, over time. But I just scatter them out all randomly. And then finally, there are all these little tiles all over the place. And these are totally optional. You can play without them to have a simpler, more streamlined game. But Jen and I very much enjoy including the dragon, which is worth seven points if somebody, or, you know, not seven points, what is it? It's, it, it you need seven armies to take down the dragon, and it's worth, I forget how many, three points or something like that? Which is a pretty big deal in the game. Uh, you know, here's uh, some homesteads, which if we get this, it lets us recruit more units. These citadels, they, uh, every region that you control at the end of the game is worth one point, but a region with these little citadels are worth two points. And so these are all scattered around also, which I just like to basically put the board down and I just kind of toss them and sprinkle them around and, and, you know, just get a random setup. And then the last thing that's part of setup is... Officially, the rules say everybody's supposed to participate in a, buy, a blind bid where you know they, they choose how much money they want to spend and reveal, and whoever bids the most, they lose that money, but they get to choose who is first player. And because this is an area control game, in a lot of ways, it's best to be last player because that means at the end of the game, when the last round is going, you will get to do the last action and nobody can stop you, and that can make or break a game. Of course, on the other hand, being the first player means you get first dibs on all six of these cards. Whereas the second player gets first dibs on whatever card this is, which will be really expensive because at the beginning part of the game we shuffle up this deck and there are six cards placed out and the one all the way to the left costs one, the next, or zero. The next two costs one, the next two costs two, and three. So this card is free, these cost one, these cost two, and this one costs three. So this is generally speaking too expensive to grab because money is crazy tight in this game. In the two-player version of this game, we're going to play over 11 rounds. And at the beginning of the game, everybody gets 12 bucks. And at the beginning of every turn, we're going to buy one of these cards. So strictly speaking, we barely have enough money to be able to make it through this game. So buying a card when it costs three, well, it really better be worth it because that's a big, big investment. All right, so the game is set up. Let's get going. Oh, one other thing. Also, as an optional random... Uh, element, you can choose to give players special start powers. Like Jin is the Fairy Queen, I'm the White Knight. There's also the Red Sorceress and the Bandit King. And each one of us, each one of these gives us special powers. Me, as the White Knight, uh, what is it? When, um, when I build a city, I also add an army. Whenever I build a city, I get to add an army, which is a cube, for free to the board. And I get one victory point at the end of the game for every island I control that is big, that has three regions. So that means I don't care so much about controlling these smaller islands. I want to control this island, this island, this island, because that's potentially one, two, three bonus points. I see. And Jen, as the fairy queen, she gets one victory point uh, if she has three forest cards at the end of the game. So forest cards are particularly valuable to her. And at the end of the game, once we've taken our 11 turns, Jen gets a 12th turn to take one more card. <clears throat> Although um, she doesn't get to do the action, but you know that could be the card that makes or breaks her if she's trying to complete a set of cards. Like for instance, maybe a final forest card comes out, and that's the one she needs to get her victory march or whatever. 
So that's the situation. I've been talking long enough. Let's start conquering. So I'm the first player, let's say, and now I have to buy a card. They're cheaper to more expensive. I want to save money, but you know what? I think for starters, I am going to pay one buck, which means one of these two cards. I'm going to go ahead and grab this Night Wizard. Now, every card has bottom information. This is the action I do. I'm buying the opportunity to do this action, but I'm also up here buying a special ability that will be in case for me for the rest of the game. In this case, the Night Wizard says, from now on, I get one victory point per Night card. So, whenever more Night cards come out, which I haven't seen any, but when they do, I want to grab them because they're all worth a victory point to me. In the same way, oh, this is even better. Jen's thing is she gets one victory point if she has three forest cards. I get one victory point for every knight card I've got. And in the meantime, I get to deploy three more units onto the board, three more army units, and I get to destroy one of Jen's unit in a region where we're both present. So, first of all, I'll deploy three more. And now, at the beginning of the game, the only place I can deploy is here on our little starting settlement. Later on, once I've built some of my own towns, I can deploy in the area where I have my own um, cities. But for now, I deployed there, and now I get to remove one of Jen's cubes. I can remove this group, but instead, I think I'll remove this one. So I've got this little island all to myself over there. Now, of course, Jen can move her troops. You can see there's a waterway to move her troops from here to here. I can move my troops from there to there as well. But moving across the waterway is very expensive. It's cheap to move from one region to another, but to travel by sea, crazy expensive. Anyway, so that was my first move. These all slide down, new one comes out, and now it is Jen's turn. And I think for Jen, it's a no-brainer. Remember, she wants forest cards. If I recall correctly, in a two-player game, there are only four forest cards in this deck. So she can't afford to let me grab any. She's going to pay one and grab this forest elf. So this is effectively a third of a point for her, and she has a choice. She can deploy three units onto the board like I did, or she can move two units. But whatever choice she makes, she now has a new ability for the rest of the game. Every time she deploys units, she gets to deploy one extra. So if she chooses to deploy units right now, she gets to deploy four. And I think that's what she's going to do. The only place she can deploy is in our starting settlement. And so, Jen just, I put three out here, Jen put four. She owns this place now, which means if the game were to end right now, Jen would score one victory point for being in control of this region, and also one victory point for being in control of this entire island, because, you know, she has the majority of cubes in this region and on the island. So this is two points. If the game were to end right now, um, I would score one point for controlling this region, but unfortunately, I don't control the island because there's two neutral cubes here, so I'd only get one point for this. I want to you know, control this island, too, because that's worth not one bonus point, but two bonus points. But anyway, not that the game is ended right now. So that was Jen's turn. She has grabbed her forest elf, and she did a really big deploy. All right, and a new card comes out. And now it's my turn again. And, hmm, let's see. So we play 12 rounds, we, or 11 rounds, we start with 12 bucks. So strictly speaking, most rounds I can afford to grab one of these, and then once in the game I could afford to grab a $2 uh, thing. And I could always get a $3 thing, but man. And but, although that's interesting. See, I've got the Night Wizard. Remember, I want Night cards. A Night Hydra just came out. So I do want to grab this guy, because this card, just having this card is worth a victory point to me. But I have to pay 3 bucks, and that's crazy expensive. But, man, but if I don't, if I buy one of these, it's going to move down to two, and then Jen might grab it, because she doesn't want me to get a victory point, but if it moves down, Jen would have to pay two bucks for it, but it's not necessarily out of the realm of reasonability to, play two, to pay two bucks to deploy, or I'm sorry, not deploy, to move five units so she could start spreading her guys all over this island, and heck, even into adjoining islands, and she could take one of my guys out. So that's a tough choice. I would rather wait till this move slides down to get cheaper, but if I wait, is Jen going to take it when it gets cheaper? Oh, let's see, I know Jen wants to pick up forest, and I can see there's no forest. Hold on, who knows, the next one might be forest. So Jen might very well take it because he, she knows how valuable it is to me. Oh man, oh that's a tough choice. But then there's lots of really good stuff over here too. I take this. I can build a city. Um, although, interestingly, I don't want to build a city. There's no reason to build a city here because this is a place where we already get to deploy. I want to build a city over here 
on this region because I'm, I'm, I'm in here, so I could build a city here. And that means in the future, I could deploy units here. But the problem is whenever I want to build a city, I want to build a city in a region where there's these little chits so I can pick them up and give myself a special, a special power. So really what I really want to do is move this guy one, two over here and then build a city here so I can get that. Uh, this is like Jen's power. If I, uh, I get these little cottage homes, whenever I you know, summon armies, I can summon an extra one. So I could just go on ahead and get this dire ogre for free, who gives me another special bonus. Um, one victory point for every three coins I, I save. If, I, if I'm cheap and I save money, because strictly speaking, there are very few ways to get money. Like um, there is, if um, somebody claims this tile, they get one buck. And I think that's it. If you're playing with three or four players, there's one card in the game, this treasure island that will give you two bucks, but otherwise there's few and far, you know, ways to get money are few and far between. So it kind of makes sense to get this for free, move this guy over here, because then there's these two, hey, build a building options. So I could actually build and get that power. Hmm. But then, you know, if I take this and Jen takes that Night Hydra, I will be devastated. I can't afford to do it. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on ahead and pay my silver. These silver are worth three. And I'm going to get the Night Hydra. Ouch. And so this is worth one victory point to me at the end of the game. It's given now when I deploy guys, I get to deploy an extra one like Jen does. And right now I get to move up to five of my units and I get to wipe one of Jen's units out. So, and I have to do it in this order. Like if I moved all the units away from this region, I couldn't hit one of Jen's units anymore. But anyway, first of all, I get five movements. I'm gonna go one, two. So now my guy is in place when I build a city there. And then I've got three more unit movements. But here's the problem. If I move north, I have to lose a buck because of this bandit. And this bandit is never gonna go away. This is a real problem. It's bad luck that randomly he happens to be, if either of us moves into the north to move into this region, we have to pay a buck. So if I'm ever gonna move into this region, I probably wanna make it a big move. So, okay. And oh man, I just, I'm really bankrupting myself, but I am gonna do it. I'm gonna pay a buck to move into the bandit held region. I've got four more movements. I'm gonna move four units. Cause if I'm gonna have to pay a buck, I'm gonna get a big movement out of it. Okay, heck, I'm not even wanting to move five. Leaving three here, because later on, if I move these guys up, I'll have to pay that money again. Maybe I should not move him. Oh yeah, and actually I was one, two, so I could only move three in here. So I think instead, I'm just gonna move all five. So, and then that's gonna be it. I'm never gonna move into this region again. And now I control this region um, because I outnumber the neutral guy that's here. I paid my buck and I've totally ceded control, but Jen controlled this region anyway. All right, and that was crazy expensive, but I did get a victory point for my troubles. Oh, and don't forget, because I've left some of my units here, I get to remove one of Jen's units from the board. And then that means, do I control this island now? I've got one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. She's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, if we're tied, nobody controls this island. And I wanna make sure I control this island at the end of the game because I get a bonus point for it. So anyway, new card comes out. It is an ancient tree spirit. And it is Jen's turn. Right, what is she gonna do? And man, I've just blown through a lot of cash. Hmm. <clears throat> you know what, I think Jen's just gonna pay one dollar and, oh. No, 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 hold on. I was thinking she would do the ancient wood because uh, it means she can summon even more guys and she could build a city and summon and she'd get to summon not one, but three. But the problem is the only place she can build a city is right here where she doesn't need a city. So she should really move out and expand. And the fact that I took this out right off the bat is kind of hurting her expansion. Now there's this ancient phoenix. Oh, wow. Now this costs two bucks. Yeah, Jen's gonna do it. It's expensive. But Jen is going to pay two bucks and she is going to grab the Ancient Phoenix. Now, this lets her move five guys just like I moved five guys. So she could do the same thing I did, make a big move in here, pay her one-time cost. But there's another interesting thing. The Phoenix has flight. For every wing you have, you reduce the cost of movement over water by one. Everybody gets this little reminder card that to move across water um, requires three movement actions to move one cube. But for every wing you have, it goes down. So it'll be easier for Jen to cross the ocean to get over to this island, etc., etc. So I think that's worth it. So she's got this power. She can move up to five units. So an interesting thing Jen could do, for example, she could take this guy and spend one, two and move him over here. And now if Jen builds a city, she'll grab that before me. 
So that's two of her movement, and then she'll move one, two, three, like I moved, and she'll have to pay a buck to get up in there. All right, because those stupid bandits. All righty, and she says that was one, two, not one, two, three, because of her flight, and so she's back on the island, and if she builds a city before me, she'll grab that. So we slide down, and a lake comes out. This is plus one victory point for a forest card. Oh, Jen really wants this. This itself is not a forest card, because it doesn't say forest in its title, but, since Jen is already collecting force cards because of her special power, she definitely wants that lake. Although, and I know it, but I don't want to pay three bucks. I've already spent three bucks. I'm not going to do that again. So, um, in fact, I might want to start, you know, going cheap. I might want to just grab this dire ogre, which gives me points for money. Although I'm not probably not going to have much money left over because I burned through so much. But it'll let me move two of my guys, and it'll, more importantly, it'll save me some cash. So that's why I'm pretty tempted. Or either that, or but you know what? Or I could build a city. But remember, I was going to move this guy down here, but now that Jen's moved over here, I know she's going to build a city before me, so it might be worthwhile to say to heck with it and just build my city up here, even though there's no particular value to building there. And these cost two bucks. I think I'm, I'm too broke to, to do one of those. But you know what? I think I'm going to stop right there because you guys have a pretty good idea of what a, a, a Empire is all about. Uh, this is in a two-player game. It's going to take place over 11 rounds. It goes very, very quick. Maybe not eight minutes quick, but super duper quick. And if you'd like to watch a little bit more, you can hit the eye up in the top right corner of the screen to go to the extended playthrough, where I'll, I'll play through a few more rounds. We'll see how far we keep going. Or um, alternatively, you can go to Final Thoughts, your choice in five, four, three, two, one.